The very idea of Christmas came under attack in the 17th century, when Kildroy Puritans saw its feasting as encouraging drunkenness and depravity. Indeed, the Puritans banned Christmas after the Civil War, even making Christmas pudding illegal. Christmas saviour Charles II reinstated the festival during the Restoration, and for his favourite Christmas breakfast with Mistress Nell Gwynn, he loved ambergris on eggs. Ambergris is sperm whale vomit. It's a natural excretion that helps digestion and then is thrown up in the sea. There are very few ingredients that I've never tried before, but ambergris, whale vomit, is certainly one of them. Pound for pound, it's more expensive than gold. So I want to make the most expensive Christmas dish ever. So why did Charles II, the king who saved Christmas, adore ambergris? To find out, I am off to the pantomime, an innovation which began in Charles's reign. But I've come to this theatre to try out ambergris for the first time in a recipe. Never tried it before. Everyone's up here! Christmas means relentless hard work for the cast of Cinderella, but ambergris could be the pick-me-up they need. My plan is knock up an old hot chocolate recipe with ambergris, which is meant to have the most amazing restoring powers. Here is a piece of ambergris. It's effectively well for me. I've procured this priceless lump from a dealer in the south of France. It doesn't look like the most appetising thing I've ever seen, is it you? Ambergris is more commonly used to manufacture perfumes. It's very musky, aromatic, um, floral element to it. But I'm really taken aback when I try it. It doesn't come through. I can barely taste anything in there other than the chocolate and the milk. So maybe old Charlie boy decided to spray it on his eggs was because he got more of an aroma from it. In the Middle East, they consider ambergris improves your virility. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm worried the ambergris won't pep up the cask, so I've got some in spray form to try and enhance its taste. It's called sip and sniff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now that might have restorative powers. Yeah. Oh no, there's a real musky smell. Oh my god, it really makes you go now. slightly lightheaded. <laughs> I think I'm wet, are you? <laughs> oh, come on. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> this punch of ambergris seduced Cinderella and Buttons, but will they still like it when I reveal what they're really drinking? The secret ingredient is actually whale vomit. <laughs> Are you kidding? No, it's some... <laughs> like it wasn't a sperm whale. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> I, I will expand. It's actually something called ambergris, which is the most valued ingredient in the perfume industry. <laughs> it is sperm whale vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not often bothered, because it's expensive. <laughs> I think what worked really well is it showed that smelling the ambergris while drinking the hot chocolate with the ambergris in it had a much greater effect. So I certainly want to use the combination of ambergris as an ingredient and ambergris as a perfume, as a spray. Now it's time for my ambergris dish. If you go back in time, Christmas feasts have been some of the most lavish banquets ever served. And this dish taps straight into the essence of that. It is based on ambergris and eggs, King Charles II's favourite dish. Now for the ambergris. I'm using concentrated essence of ambergris in my recipe. I'm going to put this in a jelly, cucumber jelly. This jelly is going to coat just some very lightly cured salmon. Pour this over the salmon. This is wonderfully light jelly that's going to have this aroma of ambergris with the back note of cucumber. I really want to create a sheen that feels like it's almost, it's almost a piece of jewellery. It'll give the luster that surrounds ambergris. After my panto experiment, I want my guests to get a whiff of ambergris to enhance the dish. So my guests can literally eat and smell at the same time. Because smell is, is an essential part of the eating process. I'm designing a festive homage to the Merry Monarch's favourite dish, except my eggs cost a little more. I've got something uh, quite, it's quite indulgent. Caviar sorbet. 
you can get several 99s for the cost of this. So there we are. King Charlie II's Amber Beats and Eggs for the 21st century. I'm watching from the kitchen to see if my guests smell the money with this lavish opener. <gasps> oh. What is that? That's a sperm whale. We're not eating the whale, only his vomit. Oh, Oh, look at that. Oh, look at it. It has got caviar in it. Now, this is your eggs and ambergris. Madam, can I interest you in a bit of ambergris by Lomberic? <laughs> now, it was probably, what, 50 quid? Just that square? It's very delicate. It's sort of flowery. It smells like stately homes. <laughs> this is the fluffer that's getting you ready for the real thing, keeping you moist for the real thing. <laughs> It's really good. I think what's challenging, it's not just, oh, this is delicious, and I've had delicious food before. No, it's sort of... that happens in your mouth as you're eating yes, it. Yes, it's occurring. It's attention-seeking. That's what it is. I'd recognise it a mile off. They're certainly talking about it, that's for sure. It's, it's, it's opened the curtains to the rest of the meal. I've never tasted anything like it in my life. So. It's the blingest thing in food. Yeah. You know, caviar's expensive, but pah, I spit on your caviar. Yeah, yeah. I use it as a garnish. For my ambergris. <laughs>